I am certain that we are here this afternoon as a result of a voice note, which um, no pun intended, but has been blazing up over the social over so social media. Um, you would recall at the last parliament session last week, I read a statement um, given what was a summary of the various consultations that were held with various agencies um, by the, the commission that had been set up to look into the whole cannabis um, subject. At that time, I, I, that's, in that statement, I also indicated that I would have been going to cabinet for a decision on the way forward. At, at yesterday's cabinet meeting, there was consensus with regards to one, authorizing the Ministry of Commerce and the Attorney General Chambers to draft the legislative and the regulatory um, framework um, to assist in the implementation of a cannabis industry. That also included looking at personal use, re religious, religious use, and um, medicinal, medicinal use. We were also, um, we also included in that to, to, for, for, for us to look at scientific research and also to setting up a sort of a license, a license regime to, to govern the, the, the industry. Authorization was also given for us to look into the, into the, the expungement of records of people who had been um, incarcerated, charged with amounts less than 30 grams um, without having a, a violent um, um, attachment to it. So this is what that was actually um, authorized by cabinet yesterday. Um, I spoke to um, Mr. Dicarius this morning as um, a member of the commission and also um, we would know him um, as, as, the, as a member of the Cannabis Commission as well because um, he was one of the people who had been pursuing, you know, what was cabinet's um, decision. And I indicated to him exactly what I have, I have um, stated this morning. I can appreciate um, that Mr. Dicarius in, in all of his exuberance because, you know, Mr. Dicarius has been one who has been at the helm of fighting for a different outlook on the whole cannabis industry for many years, I think over 20 years. He has been at the forefront, and I guess um, you know he, he he jumped ahead and, and, and shared information with his colleagues. And I noted in the voice note that he spoke to full legalization. I have since called on Mr. Dicarius and said I didn't, I never indicated to you full legalization. Exactly what I have said to you this morning was was the the scope of our our discussion. Um, so this is where we are. Um, we would all be familiar that when um, a matter is sent to the AG's chambers, what comes out is a sort of a draft framework. That draft framework would not only be reviewed by, well, subsequently it will come to cabinet, but um, it will have to be reviewed by various agencies, for example, the Bar Association and other agencies who put in it in, in terms of reviewing these things and, and giving us uh, um, their, their feedback. And then we go to cabinet with that final decision and cabinet also reviews the, the draft legislation in terms of going forward to, to parliament. So this is where we are. Um, and the work has just started as it relates to formalizing you, you know, that, um, that framework. Um, I'm open for, for any questions from the media. If there's any question as it relates to a, a legal a legal opinion, I would, uh, I would lean to my legal officer in the ministry, who is also a member of the commission, Mr. Dylan Norbert Inglis, who would also be able to, 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 to better inform on that subject. In terms of a time, a timeline for the drafting, how long will that take? You know, I have learned that, you know, I, I, I don't give timelines because I've gotten in trouble before for giving timelines. But um, as I said, the, there are several um, countries in the Caribbean who have passed their own um, framework, um, legislative framework, in terms of dealing with that. So it's not a matter of reinventing the wheel. 
as a government, um, I think what will happen is we will lean on the experiences from the various jurisdictions and identify you know, the one best suited for, for our country. And do we have any idea of when anything like that may actually come into place? As well as the uh, members of the cannabis movement in Belgium have been asking for kind of pausing on arresting people for non-violent cannabis offenses. Is that anything that will actually happen in the short term? You're referring to sort of a moratorium before the actual. Um, no, that that has not um, actually been discussed. It may, um, when when the AG commences his work, um, it, we, we, depending on the, the the time we 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 recognize that we may decide to come back and make a decision on that. But I will I will be out of place to 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 give a, a, an answer to that at this point. You would all you would be familiar of the case in St. Kitts where. Um, is it Ras Sankota, I think it was, who took the, the commissioner of police um, to, 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 it was, it was the commissioner of police, AG. versus, it was, AG. versus the commissioner, the AG, well, you may be right, I guess, um, and, and he actually won his case, and um, I, from, from my understanding, we also have two pending cases in St. Lucia as it relates to, 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 to that as well, so that would be a very interesting development in terms of you know, how we move forward as well. But do you have any concerns that the police, because, I mean, the commissioner has indicated that they will still be carrying out arrests as usual, as, you know, in adherence to the existing laws, yeah. so... Yeah. Marijuana know. is still illegal, and they, it is still, unless, unless they, this has gone through all the stages, it is still illegal, and so I would caution anybody out there with regards to, you know, taking the, the, the voice note or, or, or that, Hurdle, as 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 we have uh, as we call it, um, um, to thinking that it, it it's a it's a green light to, to 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 do as you please. It is not. In fact, the the whole um, framework would also include a number of things, which includes smoking in public. It would also include um, uh, not selling marijuana in in, in public spaces. The, the, the distance to schools in which you can actually um, smoke, or it's, it's a lot. It's really about the whole privacy in, in, in addressing in addressing your smoking your smoking um, smoking cannabis. Um, I know there's there there, is, there, there will be also a, a look as it relates to the Rastafarian community and using um, marijuana as a, a sacrament, and, and and that also will be. Um, looked at in its own in its own um, timing and, and space as to how it's dealt, dealt with. Um, with regard to uh, the statements just made by Minister, I want to make it clear that there is a stark difference in the development of legislation and the development of policy and framework. We are currently at the stage of the development of policy and framework, which will look at the discussions for the matters surrounding cannabis and industry in cannabis. So after you have developed a policy and a framework that goes through your consultative process, you speak to your stakeholders and you determine from there how you develop your legislation for cannabis. So we're quite some, some ways away from having anything on the books for cannabis. Is there, and you said you're some ways away, but we've seen that we've been talking about the work of the Commission for quite a while. Mm -hmm. We're still in the policy stages. Do you know when we'll graduate to the legislative stages? No, we cannot say. We have to wait on the AG's chambers who's assisting with the development of that framework. So, mm -hmm. what can we expect to come out of that whole policy um, process? Well, an understanding as to how we will be developing our industry for cannabis. We cannot see as of today that you will be able to have X amount of cannabis on your purse, so know that it will be legal for this purpose or that purpose. That comes into your policy, as you would appreciate what a policy document is. So after a policy document has been approved, uh, then you develop your legislative framework and then your legislation. Past, I mean, let's say for the past year at least that we were close, we were very close. We had a white paper from the cannabis movement which morphed into a white paper handed to a third party, an intermediary was Pumandu to present to the government. Do you, in your heart, believe that the government has wasted time on this on this issue in the past year or so? Because I'm not sure my colleagues, we felt like late last year when we heard all the talks, we felt like, okay, it was on the horizon very soon. But now we're hearing we still have 
the consultative phase, which we thought we went through already, and other phases. So, can you, do you believe that time has been wasted on this on, on this matter? I, I indicating making a statement waste of time. I think is an unfair statement because um, we cannot rush into anything as sensitive as you know um, either decriminalizing, legalizing cannabis industry. There are a number of um, issues that have, must be looked at. Foremost in all of that is the whole education um, that has that, that we have been, been been addressing. In addition to that, the licensing structure. What what really do we want to get out of it? Um, from an in, in investor and interest standpoint, we see it as an industry. Okay, where um, you can you could extract oils and process and. We have, we have quite a few um, external parties who have indicated interest in assisting in that regard. So um, in terms of the, 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 the farmers who, who, have, who, who will be the ones planting, as it relates to you know, what, what's, what's the acreage, it cannot be something that we can make a decision overnight. Um, there's, I, I agree with you, there has been a lot of information that has come to the fore, um, but at the end of the day, we have to satisfy the legal requirements um, in terms of pushing this agenda forward. And what sort of resistance are we getting? I mean, with the consultation so far, I know we have the public health groups, the uh, parents, the PTAs, and these other... Has, has there been any resistance to decriminalization efforts? Um, from, from the various reports I have received so far, I think everybody is on the same page that they, we must have a regulated environment. I, I, I don't think there are two um, ways about that. We must have a regulated environment. The concerns have been Will this environment um, make the, 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 the obtaining of marijuana to, in terms of minors using marijuana, in terms of how it's going to be used um, generally? I think these are the kind of concerns. People are concerned about um, whether you, in terms of your, your, your medical health bill at the end of the day, will, this, will you see a spike in that? What is in place for people who um, may, 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 may use marijuana for the first time and develop certain psychotic um, uh, um, um, responses. So these are the kind of um, concerns that have been raised as, uh, as it relates to uh, um, any environment where, where you decriminalize or you, or you legalize. Is the, is, are there going to be any more town hall meetings by the commission or is that phased? No, I think that's it. That, 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 is, that is the end of the town hall meetings, yes. Because you would appreciate there the was quite a bit going around the island. Further to that, the, the, we had the individual consultations with various groups. Plus, we had the national consultation um, live via NTN. So there have been quite a bit. And, and um, I think in terms of the process having been started somewhere early in 2018, um, former, uh, the, the Minister of, of um, Home Affairs was um, first um, I'm, I'm in charge of the process. Then, then it was passed on to 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 me as the minister of Invest and Lucia, and I think today we are we are here where we are. You know, as it relates to all of the various consultations and all of the conversations that that have that have taken place. In terms of um, children using the substance, as it is right now, they can get access to it and it's illegal. Um, when it becomes legal, or if and when it becomes legal, are you? How can you assure parents, guardians that the system will prevent them from having access to it? And that is the whole thrust of of the, the education aspect of it as well. Um, in addition to that, um, there's a very specific area that speaks to um, marijuana coming into the hands of minors. I'm not, I'm not. Um, I, can, I cannot speak to it. I don't know if you. You, 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 you um, want to speak to it, but um, um, there, is, there, there is quite a bit that has been put forward by the various consultations as it relates to protecting minors. Did the constitutional claim put forth by ICA have anything to do with the consensus by the cabinet members? No, no. In fact, um, I was only made aware of that, um, that um, pending um, case this morning. Um, but I'm aware of the, the case in St. Kitts. So you know um, sorry? <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I'm working at that time. I'm working at that time. <laughs> I'm working at that Wait, time. That's yeah. it for the yeah. 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 Um, but no, but. Yeah, and maybe it was.
speak to the case and maybe President. Um, just the point on minors. Um, on the point of minors, um, we have, at the commission level, had salience in our minds throughout the process that we did not want cannabis to be in the hands of minors. We do accept that currently the youth have access to cannabis, but when you have a framework that uh, that completely prohibits use of cannabis in any way, it's difficult for you to say that it's prohibited entirely and it's also prohibited if you sell it to youth. If you were to have a framework that either legalizes or decriminalizes, then you can have penalties for persons who step beyond the legalized framework or the decriminalized framework. So if you have a license for you to sell cannabis, for example, under a legalized or decriminalized framework, and you are prohibited from selling to somebody under the age of 20, 18, 25, whatever age that the, the um, policy dictates, then you may lose your license, which would ma then make it difficult for you to sell to other persons. So the considerations are then deeper than just breaking the law as it stands now. You mean like the numerous students who somehow have access to alcohol every day? Well, that, that, is a, that is an issue that we are looking at as well. We, had, we did keep in mind that there are issues with the current alcohol regime and the licensing regime, and we wanted to make sure the cannabis regime did not suffer those same issues.